Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. Today I'm going to show you how to get real-time search results from your PHP page. Now the great thing about PHP is that you can provide dynamic content to your users, but as you know, once that content is delivered, PHP is done and there's no way to change that content until the page is reloaded. And I'm going to show you how to get around that using a crazy simple jQuery script. So I've got an example set up here and before I jump into that, let's take a look at my database. So I have a database called test and a table called directory and inside of this directory I've got some columns, first name, last name, title, company, phone, email address, pretty much anything that you would find in a standard contact list. Okay, so if I go over and I simply type the word John, then it's going to query the database with anybody that has either John in the first name or John in the last name. And I can even type the company name and it will show me those results as well. So anything that meets anything of that criteria will populate on the page. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create my text box. So I'll just say input type equals text. And I'm going to give this an ID of search since that will, that's what we'll be referencing in jQuery. Now below that I'll do a paragraph break and I'm going to create a span and I'll give that the ID of result. And essentially this is where all of our search results are going to appear. Now since this page does require jQuery, let's go ahead and get that added. Okay, so the easiest way to get jQuery is to simply type Google jQuery in Google and you'll come across this hosted libraries. All you have to do is copy this script here in the description and pop that into the top of your page. All right, so once that's done, I'm gonna create another script. And the first thing that I always do when referencing jQuery is make sure that the page has been loaded. So anytime we reference an element, we'll start it with a dollar sign. I'll say document.ready, and then I'll just create a standard function inside of this ready. So everything that we do is going to happen inside here once the page is loaded. So I wanna reference this search ID, and I do it the same way, only I'll do a dollar sign, and then in quotes, I'll do hashtag search. And the hashtag just simply means that we're referencing an ID, all right? So we'll do uh, search.keyup, meaning whenever I type something and the letter's already on the page, it's going to perform a function, okay? So what I can do is function, and then I'll just set that up like a standard function in PHP. Okay, so now everything that we have inside of here is gonna happen whenever that character is already on the page, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reference Ajax, and I can start that with a dollar sign and then dot Ajax. Now, Ajax has a lot of properties, but we're only going to rely on four of them for this tutorial. Uh, the first one's gonna be the URL, the second will be the type, the third will be the data, and the last one will be success. Now, depending on the property, these can be set up a little bit differently. So for instance, the URL is simply a string with the URL that is going to process all of our information. So I'll just create one called backend.php. And we can see that I've already got a backend.php document ready to go. Um, and then I'll put a comma after that. The type specifies the type of information being sent to the server, whether it's a get or a post. So basically, you can assume that this is like the method of a form. And for this, we'll be using post. And the data is sent as a plain object, but it essentially uh, specifies what data is being sent to the server. Uh, since we're sending it as a form value, we're gonna send that through a variable like we would in a form itself. Uh, so with this being a plain object, it has to be wrapped in the curly brackets. And I'm gonna create a variable called search. And since we're already inside of the search element, I can simply say this dot val, and that's going to grab the value of this text input here and assign it to a variable called search. Now the success property has to come back as a function, so I'll just simply say function, and I'll give this the property of result, and this can really be whatever you want it to be, um, and then I'll just close this function like regular, and then this is where we specify what happens with the results. So I'm gonna grab the element of result, right down here, and we're gonna change the internal HTML of that, so I'll just say HTML, and then result. And essentially this has to match this because it needs to know what uh, results, or what we're populating this with. So essentially this is everything that we need to do on this page 
we're done. All right, so now all we have to do is reference this in our back end. So I'll do my PHP tags and I'll process this the same way that I would process any other regular form. So I'll say if is set the post value of search and then everything else happens here. So if I were just to echo hello, then whenever I type something on my text field, it should populate hello. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so I pressed the key, the T key, and the word hello came up. So that means that our form is working correctly. Now, I don't want it to reference the page every single time I type a character because if I type the letter T, it's going to show every result of anybody's first name, last name, email address, bank account, whatever the case may be that has the letter T in it. So I want to narrow that down a little bit. And I can do that by specifying the minimum required uh, characters. Uh, so first thing I'll do is I'll get the variable search and I'll assign that from the post value of search. And that'll just make things a little bit easier. So here I can say if the string length of search is greater than two, then process all of our information. So now if I say echo, I'll just say echo search, then after two characters, it should show whatever I'm typing in the box. So if I say J-O, nothing's going to happen, but as soon as I type J-O-H, then it's going to show me what's on, what I'm typing here in the window. Okay, so, so far so good. Everything's working exactly the way that we want it to. So now let's go ahead and pull some information from the database. Before I can do that, I need to connect to the database. And I've got another external file here called db.inc.php. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm gonna try to create a variable using a new instance of the PDO class with the driver of my SQL. My host name is localhost. My DB name is test. I'm specifying a character set of UTF-8 followed by my username and my password. If that fails, then it's going to catch the PDO exception, assign it to an E variable and kill the script and display whatever message that made that fail. And I don't want to connect to that every time a character is pressed. So I'm just going to include that in the top of the page. So I'll say include db.inc.php. All right, so down here, I'm going to build my query inside of a variable called SQL. And I'm simply going to say, select all from directory where first name like, and then I'm going to create a, a placeholder called S. And this will just be short for string or for search rather, or last name like S. And of course we can go through and we can specify every field there is, but to keep things simple, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Now, one issue with using prepared statements, which is what I'm using with PDO, you can't do like, uh, whenever you use a like condition, you would typically have to wrap percent signs around your variables. And we can't do that using prepared statements. So what I need to do is change my search variable to search equals percent sign search percent sign. And now we can process this just like normal. All right, so now I'm gonna create a variable called STMT, which is just short for statement. And that's going to equal a new instance of DB, which is what my variable was here. And we're gonna do prepare. All right, so I'll just reference my SQL here. So essentially I could have typed all of this directly into prepare, but just to keep it a little cleaner, I've done it this way. Um, now I need to bind that, um, bind our search string to this placeholder. So I'll just say bind param, and we're gonna replace this S placeholder with search, and then everything should work out just fine. Now the only thing left to do is STMT execute, and this will execute our query. All right, so uh, while it's finding results that match that, um, I'll go ahead and assign a variable called row, and that's gonna equal STMT fetch. And from here on out, we can just process this like we would if you're using MySQLi. So for instance, I'll just say first name equals row first name from the database. And now that I've populated all the values that we're actually going to need, I'll just echo out a new div tag and I'll show the first name, the last name, and then I'll do a paragraph break. And then I'll show the company, their title, the phone number, and for the email address, we can actually do a link. So I'll say a ref equals mail to, and then the email address. And then I'll display the email address on the page, close the link and close the div tag as well. All right, so if I go to my page, then I can just start typing in John and it's going to show this information. So let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit more. 
so let me go into my index page. I'm just going to create a real quick style sheet here. So I'll say style. I'll create a class called contact. And we'll say uh, the float will be left. That way it will display on uh, horizontally on the page. And I'll say margin will be 20px. I'll give it a background of just a light gray color. And I'll say text align center. And this should be good enough just to get us by. I'll go ahead and pad this as well. So padding 10px. Okay, so let me go back over to my back end and reference this class. So class equals contact. And I'll refresh my page. One thing that I did notice is I did not close my email link, so that's probably going to help clean some things up too. All right, so we'll say John, and now we've got um, our fields here. So this is populating the information that we need. Let's go and clean this up just a little bit more. Refresh this again, type John, and then here's what we're looking at here. Um, so this is essentially it. If I do uh, say Jake, you see Jake Ford here, but if I type Ford, then it's going to populate Sharon Ford as well. Okay, so this is essentially how you would do this. We're getting real-time results. Very, very simple script, and there's not a lot of work put into it. I mean, we essentially did this in just a matter of, you know, 15 or less lines. I've used this for years, and it just simply works. So I wanted to share that with you guys, and if you have any questions, let me know. I will uh, see you on the next one.